These seven signals are often lost in the digital world and they're primarily processed by the right side of the brain. So here's the reason why this becomes a crucial issue in our discussion, that it's these nonverbal signals that get processed by the right side of the brain that are directly allowing us to take in the internal state, the emotions, the state of mind of another person is primarily communicated through these nonverbal signals. So if someone is doing a lot of verbal stuff, a lot of texting, a lot of just uh, doing things without this kind of nonverbal sharing, they're not going to be developing what I call a mind sight map. That is a map of the mind of another person. And they're not going to even be having the opportunity to develop a mind sight map of themselves. And when you take relationships face to face, out of the kinds of experiences that children and adolescents are having, mm -hmm. it alters the direction of their d development. So at a very simple Ever was, you know, we we're shutting off the screen and he said, um, he goes, mom, my body wants this, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I just, yeah. it was so sweet because it was his five-year-old way of saying, there's some part of me that feels compelled and impulsively mm -hmm compulsively drawn to this and yet this other maybe self part of me you know dr um, richard schwartz who created the ifs internal family systems model talks about the goal of self-leadership you know and all these other parts of us that can operate um and want our attention and are here to protect us or soothe us or inform us about wounds you know so it's like he was saying the self myself doesn't really care about this and wants to connect with you mom or wants to do whatever it wants to do yeah, but the but this other part of me <laughs> so the part of me wants oh. to watch the screen so we talked about that for a while I just thought it was such a precious inquiry you know um, oh, wow. but what you awesome. were saying a second ago was so touching because they do I mean we we watch what our guardians and our caregivers and our our favorites you know our grandmas or whomever what what they're up to and, and how they do and um and then at the same time, it is in char you know it is up to us to be to have some jurisdiction around yeah. parameters. Yeah. And you know we have we have um, timers that go off, and whenever here's the timer now, it's a no brainer. I'll just go yeah okay. That's right. So with my grandchildren in this computer world, when they come visit, and sometimes for the entire or for a lot of the summer, when they come visit. It's like they want to play computer, great, great. You know, they want screen time, great, great. And what about, you know, let's, let's go for a walk. Uh, I, I, I want you to help me um, fix lunch. And well, I don't want to, Grandma. And come on, you can show me so much. There's so much I can learn from you. And we don't get to see each other so uh, often. Or um, um, let's go look at. Let's, let's see if um, what you know this time of year. Let's see. Let's let's go see what trees are blooming, and starting to bloom. You know, here in California, that's going on. I mean, it's endless. Rather than, and here's the old mother. They're on the screen. You know, oh God, they say that's not healthy. <laughs> but I'm so. He said, Mom, Facebook is for, it's, it's boring, it's for old people. And I said, if that's not true, I love Facebook. And he said, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. He wanted Instagram. Okay. And so, one of the reasons that I can't, that I have a hard time with social media and teenagers. It's not just the head down, the checking out, all of that, but not being present, which is a huge, you know, what we're all fighting with technology is not being present in the moment because it's all, no, nobody's here. You know, nobody's here with you. Everybody's here. I know that. But also with middle schoolers and high schoolers, I just remember middle school for me was one long, treacherous, feeling left out feeling. I just constantly felt left out, constantly felt left out. Most schools just can be a nightmare. But now with social media, it's like, can you imagine the feelings we had of left out, being left out in middle school and then having it constantly in your face? I mean, you're imagining that everyone's getting together without you, but now you can see that everyone's getting out. I mean, oh my gosh. 
what these kids have to deal with and know about each other. Um, and also the way I've seen it used to kind of prove your worthiness. You know, like all middle schoolers feel left out. So the second they get together, they take pictures, put it online so they can show they're part of a crew, you know. And then what I try to teach Chase is like that. Someone's receiving that picture. Like you have to be mindful of the way that everyone else is feeling when they when they see that, you know, kind of like constantly seeing invitations and we didn't receive one. Constantly seeing invitations, we didn't receive one. So, um, so there's just a lot about kindness that I think we can teach our kids through social media and being mindful of other people's feelings. 